Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another day of Mark Park brought to you by Mike Bjork. Today is Friday, and happy Friday to you guys. Hope you guys got some great upcoming plans for the weekend. Uh, it is October 14th. We got a bit of economic news releases to be scheduled for today, so we're going to jump right into it. And we'll start off with the retail sales for the month of September. So the last reporting back in August was kind of a negative. It, it pulled back and contracted 0.2%, uh, or it was down by 2.2%. Forecast for September was supposed to be a pretty good number at 0.7%, and it came in pretty close to expectation at 0.6%. So good numbers over retail. Now, when you strip out, uh, we get the kind of core sales where you strip out autos, the big ticket items that can uh, obviously uh, those big numbers can uh, obscure the numbers very easily. So we have uh, numbers where you exclude those. So again, uh, like uh, regular retail sales, it was down 0.2% in August, and the forecast was at half percent. And it did grow up. Uh, it did go up a half percent in September. So September turned out to be a pretty good month. Auto sales were up as well as all other ticketable items, which typically we get a lot August September, primarily because uh, you got back to school. So typically, think people start buying, you know, getting re kids ready for school and such. Uh, now we also got the producer price index. This is also known as the PPI, uh, which is uh, inflationary numbers on the wholesale side. Now we do look at this number, but it's not as important as the CPI or the PC because it's even though the producer price index could potentially go up it doesn't mean those numbers uh, from the wholesale side always get passed on to the consumer so that's why it doesn't have as much of an influence as CPI or PCE so the previous reporting back in August was 0% and a forecast was to go up to 0.2% and it jumped up 0.3% so a pretty big uh, jump there uh, out of the PPI for the month of September now, if you strip out the volatility of what food and energy brings, we have what they call the core PPI, and this is really what we, the Fed will look at. And we had a 0.1% increase, a jump increase for the month of uh, August, and it was supposed to continue at another 1% uh, for September, and it went up 0.2%, so a little hotter than what we had expected uh, in terms of uh, inflation on the wholesale side. So definitely you're going to see all eyes and ears will be going on uh, CPI and PC during the next uh, reporting to see if that jumped up a bit more. And consumer sentiment, uh, we had a 91.2 on the reading. Uh, this is our first reading. We'll have another one towards the end of the month uh, for the month of October. So back in September, we had our final reading in September was 91.2. Uh, forecast is supposed to be in that same range at 91.7, uh, but it dropped all the way down to 87.9. So People are probably getting a little bit now. With now that we're getting these debates, uh, presidential debates, maybe people aren't uh, as uh, happy or rosy about as about everything uh, that as they initially were uh, feeling maybe last month. Uh, business and inventories, uh, which is a good sign. Uh, July was at they only had zero percent, and it went up by 0.2 percent. So businesses started uh, packing in a little bit more inventories. Uh, you know, usually they do that when they're projecting more business down the line. So that's kind of a good sign as well. Plus, we're heading towards uh, holiday season, so that's a good sign as well. Hopefully, uh, you'll see more of that gearing up. Uh, let's take a look here at the headline notes. And the stock market was up. It was actually up a lot further uh, today because we had some uh, earnings reports. They liked the data that we saw uh, with the retail sales. Uh, earnings reports in the final sector came in really high. Uh, all the major banks uh, basically were showing good numbers. So even though we've been uh, hearing a lot of negative news with Wells Fargo and Deutsche Bank, uh, earnings reports came in uh, uh, positive, so those were going up there. But what's spooking the market a little bit, and it's pulling back on some avenues, is inflation on the PPI level as well as the CPI level in China were up quite a bit, and that has people a bit concerned that that could be, you know, uh, getting passed on, obviously, globally. Uh, also today, we got a few uh, Fed speakers, including uh, Miss Yellen later today, that will be speaking. And of course, you know, if Jack Yellen says something that, something in her speech that catches their attention, uh, that could also move markets as well. So uh, be prepared for possible possible volatility. Uh, another one came out, I, I forget which one it was. He basically, again, a lot of Maria during that, it's appropriate to raise rates in uh, December. Uh, there's a great article on uh, MarketWatch talking about uh, Wilbur Ross, who's in favor of a rate hike because basically, uh, as we mentioned before, kind of like what the hawkish Fed members were saying, uh, raising rates is going to be a paramount uh, because it could lead to a possible recession. He's forecasting, regardless whoever wins the election, uh, there will probably be a recession next 18 months. 
So, I mean, these goes in cycles, and we will be kind of doing them about that time period. So I wouldn't be surprised if we go into recession for how long. It's hard to be certain. But his take on it was uh, need to raise rates because if we uh, – right now the Fed ha is basically – has nothing in their toolbox left to fight in, uh, inflation or recession uh, if we don't raise rates. So that would be important uh, to go ahead and raise rates now so that way you can always lower it um, in the future here. Uh, here's the bond market. We're uh, now the negative here. We were just hoping to try get a uh, nice positive trend line, but now we dip down below here. That kind of broke our possible trend of a higher uh, movement upwards. So now we dip down low. So right now we're down about 12 basis points, which will lead us to a little bit worse pricing from where we left off yesterday, uh, unfortunately. So uh, so we had our trend line kind of broke it today. Uh, stock market kind of took that thunder. Uh, with some of the positive news that they had. So more money is coming out of the bond market going into the stock market. And that's to be expected. But we do got to watch this because here we got the support here, but we got the 100-day moving average. We got the 10-day moving average coming down here. Uh, we want to try to get upwards, but this could be this could pose as a difficult road for us to get above that, especially since we've been down the last couple uh, days below the 100-day moving average. Uh, this could keep us, this could provide a ceiling for future possible improvement in our, in our interest rates so again uh stay tuned uh this could be uh, a little bit of rocky road or rocky slope here coming forward here all right folks you guys have a wonderful weekend thanks so much for watching we'll see you guys on monday take care Bye bye